A gracious good day to one and all once again. Tis I, North and the First, by grace of God, Emperor of the United States and Protector of Mexico. Back with you once again for episode 78 of Emperor Norton's Fantastic History Vlog. Today is June 24, 2020. It is our 99th day under COVID-19 restrictions. Well, let's begin as we do every day with our national days. It's Swim a Lap Day. So I don't know if the public pools are open, but if you've got one at home, well, swim a lap. It's good for you. Uh, Museum Comes to Life Day. Okay, that's about. International Fairy Day. Mm -hmm. And Praline's Day. Ooh, I could go for one of those right now. Mm -hmm. That sounds delicious. Well, uh, our event from San Francisco history today is that on this date in 1842, the writer Ambrose Bierce was born in Ohio. And thanks today to Dr. Weird at foundsf.org for our story. Ambrose Bierce, the world-class cynic, best known as the author of The Devil's Dictionary, lived here in San Francisco in the old Russ Hotel, that's on Montgomery Street, when he was beginning to scandalize San Francisco with his incisive, vicious commentary. Bierce launched his career when he took over J.W. Watkins' Town Crier column for the San Francisco Newsletter in 1868. Anyone who reads even these early offerings can't help but notice that the improvements under Bierce's editorialship were beyond technique. There was an unmistakable streak of genuine hostility running through every line. It was written about him, and he was called the wickedest man in San Francisco. Bierce interspersed his ferocious satirical sallies with bizarre, morbid descriptions of accidents, suicides, homicides, and all manner of death and disaster. Though Bitter Bierce, as he was often called, regularly savaged women along with the city's ethnic groups, politicians, and churchgoers, he could not be accused of prejudice. Bierce hated everybody. In his view, all of mankind was hopelessly, a hopelessly botched experiment devised in hell, and the stupidity of every soul on earth had nothing whatsoever to do with ancestry. In the 1880s and 1990s, Bierce almost single-handedly battled the corrupt railroad monopolists who ruled their ill-gotten empire from atop Knob Hill. He called railroad magnate Leland Stanford, Steeland Stanford, insisted that all the railroad barons were public enemies and indictable criminals, and warned the public that the trains were so often behind schedule, the passengers would be, quote, exposed to the perils of salinity, senility, pardon me, before reaching their destinations. Beers campaigned for public ownership of the railroads. Beers was also a foe of U.S. imperialism, which was setting out a course that would lead to thrilling genocidal adventures in Vietnam, Indonesia, and Central America. Though his editor, William Randolph Hearst, almost single-handedly whipped the nation into a colonist fury, it's been in, it's been in ever since. In later years, Bierce's behavior grew curiouser and curiouser. He would write from midnight to dawn with a human skull on his desk and a tame lizard at it on his shoulder. Surrounded by a menagerie of frogs, snakes, squirrels, and birds, Although with his caustic journalism, Bierce produced a body of horror fiction that ranks with that of Poe and Lovecraft. His subject matter was a truly bizarre three-ring cir three circus of ghosts and murderers, animated machines, and mad dogs. Apparitions and extrasensory perceptions. In 1913, disgusted with the viciousness, greed, and chicanery that passes for human life, Bierce disappeared into revolution-torn Mexico with the avowed intention of joining the insurrection led by Pancho Villa. He explained, the fighting in Mexico interests me. I'm going to go down there and see if the Mexicans can shoot straight. Apparently they could. He was never heard from again. The matter of death is still a mystery. And there is a street in San Francisco named for Ambrose Bierce. 
Let's move on to our other events today. In 1509, Henry VIII is crowned King of England in Westminster Abbey. Hats off to all monarchs. 1717, the first Freemasons Grand Lodge was founded in London. We were a Mason ourselves. Occidental Lodge number one here in San Francisco. 1880, the first performance of O Canada, the song that would become the National Anthem of Canada, the Congress uh, des Canadiens Français. 1901, the first exhibition by Pablo Picasso at the age of 19 opens in Paris. 1916, Mary Pickford becomes the first female star to get a million dollar contract. 1948, the Soviet Union begins the West Berlin blockade by stopping access by road, rail, and water. 1958, Nina Simone releases her debut jazz album, Little Girl Blue our births today. 1893, Roy O. Disney, co-founder of the Disney Company and the brother of Walt Disney. 1895, Jack Dempsey, the American boxer. Um, he was a bouncer at the Billy Goat Saloon in North Beach, now the Comstock. 1919, Al Molinaro, the American actor from The Odd Company, Happy Days, you might remember him. 1922, American comic, Jack Carter, 1944, guitarist Jeff Beck, 1946, Ellison Onizuka, uh, he was aboard the ill-fated Challenger, died in that uh, accident. 1946, uh, former Secretary of Labor, Robert Reich, and if you don't read his commentaries or watch his videos, he's spot on these days. And 1947, mixed Fleetwood of Fleetwood Mac, our desk today. 1908, Grover Cleveland, the 22nd and 24th President of the United States. 1987, Jackie Gleason, of course, the Jackie Gleason Show, the Honeymooners. To the moon, Alice! To the moon! 2005, Paul Winchell. Now, if you're a baby boomer, you might remember him. He was a ventriloquist, but... Uh, much more than that, actually. He was the first person to uh, build and patent an implantable artificial heart. He took up uh, being a ventriloquist uh, during while he was recovering from polio at the age of 13, answered an ad in a magazine, and then went on to uh, do a lot of voice acting. Uh, you might remember him as Dick Dastardly in The Wacky Racers and numerous other cartoon voices. But he's probably best known for his children's TV show that ran in the 60s, Winchell Mahoney Time. Hooray! Hurrah! It's Winchell Mahoney Time! It's Winchell Mahoney Time! It's time for fun! Do, do, do. Hooray! Hurrah! We're glad everybody's here. Come on, let us give a cheer to everyone! Interesting story about that. Now, he did that for Metro Media uh, broad, Broadcasting. I think that's the name of it. Anyway, he got into a contract dispute with them, and he wanted more money, and they threatened to destroy his tapes if he didn't settle. And they did. Winchell Mahoney time, you can't really find any clips from it anymore. Uh, a few stills we'll put up here. Uh, he sued and got $3.8 million for the value of the tapes and $14 million in damages, and he won. He got his money. Um, you might remember a character, of course, it was Jerry Mahoney. That was the real famous uh, ventriloquist dummy he had. But there was another one that's sort of this sidekick, a dull-witted young man by the name of Sluggo Smith. Sluggo Smith, I'm sorry. Uh, Knucklehead Smith, I was coming to that. Because uh, he looked an awful lot like Sluggo Smith from the comic strip Nancy and Sluggo. I somehow think they might have been related. Uh, if you are a fan of the TV show South Park, you may remember episodes with the Al Gore character, and he'll always say, I'm serial! I'm serial, instead of I'm serious. Well, that's a line from Knucklehead Smith. That's, I believe, where they got it from. I can't imagine that that's not the case. Ooh, a double negative. Anyway, you understand what I'm saying. Well, we've got a couple of other people today. Uh, American keyboardist Bernie Worrell from Funk Adelic. He uh, also performed uh, with Talking Heads when they had the big band. Great keyboardist. And we just got word of the death of Harry Britt. Uh, he was a member of the San Francisco Board of Supervisors. He was appointed to that position upon the death 
of Harvey Milk succeeded him, was reelected to another term on his own, a uh, great activist, a uh, real gentleman, and we're very sorry to see him go. Well, that wraps it up for today's edition. Until we see you again, stay safe, stay inside. If you can go outside now, you know. But if you do, wear a mask. It's such a simple little thing to do. I'm disgusted by all the people not wearing masks and coming up with just insane reasons why they can't. It not only protects themselves, but it protects the rest of us. Think about others. And until we see you again, a gracious, good day. Oh, and be kind to one another, please. <laughs>